Hi, I'm Dr. David Parsons, and welcome to this Mind Lab by Unitech screencast on top 10 learning theories for digital and collaborative learning. So, what's a learning theory? Well, it's a theory about changes in our observable behaviour, and the things we look at in a learning theory are how these changes can become relatively permanent, whether the changes are immediate or potential what role experience plays, what aspects of reinforcement are present. So these are quite common themes in different theories of learning. So here are 10 learning theories. Now, of course, there are plenty of other theories that are not included here. I've just chosen those that I think are most appropriate when we're thinking about digital and collaborative learning. And they're not really in any particular order of importance although they are rather loosely in order of date. So we'll be going through these 10 one at a time. So let's begin with conditioning. Now conditioning and behaviorist theories are very, very common in psychology. Perhaps two of the most famous versions are classical conditioning, Pavlov, and instrumental or operant conditioning by Skinner. Now Pavlov, as you may know, uh, did experiments with dogs whereby he could use a bell to cause them to salivate, having conditioned them to expect food. Now we don't tend to use these type of classical conditioning approaches in the classroom, but incidentally uh, we're probably sure that they happen all the time. Now Skinner's approach is somewhat different. Rather than something we do to an animal leading to a behaviour, in his experiments something the animal did led to a result which then reinforced what the animal did. The classic example was putting an animal in a box and getting it to press a button and receive some food. Now, this might sound all rather mechanistic, but Skinner had quite a few theories that apply to education. For example, he suggested that learners need rapid feedback and to work at their own pace. And from a digital perspective, he came up with the ideas of programmed learning and the teaching machine. So he had lots of ideas that apply today to e-learning. Here's a quote from Skinner on behaviorism. The ideal of behaviorism is to eliminate coercion, to apply controls by changing the environment in such a way as to reinforce the kind of behavior that benefits everyone. So Skinner wasn't really into any kind of control. What he was kind of looking at was much more positive forms of reinforcement. Here's another theory, connectionism, uh, not to be con confused with connectivism that we look at later, and the law of effect. Now this theory came from Thorndike, who's probably the first of the real educational theorists. His concept of connectionism was a neural bond between stimulus and response, so it had a lot in common with these conditioning and behaviorist approaches. He felt that learning was incremental rather than insightful. So we have to build it a step at a time. Another thing he came up with was the law of effect. That is, reinforcement increases the strength of a connection. Punishment does not change it, really emphasizing the importance of positive reinforcement in learning. Here's a nice quote from Thorndike, Thorndike on lecturing. The lecture and demonstration methods represent an approach in which the teacher lets the pupil find out nothing which he could possibly be told or shown. They try to give him an educational fortune as one bequeaths property by will. Now, I think Thorndike said this around 1912, and here we are still using lectures and demonstrations. Another very well-known well educationalist is John Dewey, um, who founded progressive education as a concept. A number of concepts that are important to him, self-governing learners, teachers as guides, outdoor education, the scientific study of how individuals develop, that is, focus on the individual learner, and cooperation between school and home. He also advocated hands-on learning and experiential education, and Dewey is still very influential today. He's an interesting guy. Among other things, one of the things he did was to head the commission that cleared Trotsky of allegations from the Moscow trials. A quote here from Dewey about learning. Give the pupil something to do, not something to learn. And the doing is of such a nature as to demand thinking. Learning naturally results. 
Now, another very famous educational theorist is uh, Lev Vygotsky, whose work was really not known in the West until after his death, but he's really the father of constructivism with his social development theory. He emphasized social learning and felt that it preceded development, which, as we see, rather differs from Piaget, who is also another constructivist. He came up with two very important concepts. One is the zone of proximal development, which is the area between what the learner can do independently and what they can do with help from others. And those others are known as the more knowledgeable other, and that's someone or something who knows more than the learner. And it might be a teacher or a peer, but it could equally be a computer. Vygotsky on teaching, the teacher must adopt the role of facilitator, not content provider. And we've heard that many, many times when we think about education today. Here's another um, aspect of constructivism, which is equilibration, which is Jean Piaget's um, approach to constructivism. I guess what's important about Piaget is his concept of intelligence and the environment. So intelligence is dynamic. And this equilibration idea is the continuous drive towards balance with the environment. Piaget is well known for coming up with the concepts of stages of development, the four stages, sensory motor, pre-operational, concrete operations, and formal operations. One of the important ideas Piaget has in education is that educational environments should provide the opportunity for discovery by the student. Here's a quote from Piaget on education. The principal goal of education in the schools should be creating men and women who are capable of doing new things, not simply repeating what other generations have done. Albert Bandura is well known for social cognitive theory, and his main contribution to theory was the idea that observation and modelling can give you the same learning experience as direct experience. He talks about reciprocal determinism, a dynamic interplay between the person, the environment, and behaviour. In this theory, teachers act as models because they're demonstrating behaviour. On the other side of the equation, Bandura also talked about the fact that media can affect behaviour in a negative way, for example, violence in films and television. Bandura says about observation, coping with the demands of everyday life would be exceedingly trying if one could arrive at solutions to problems only by actually performing possible options and suffering the consequences. A more recent but equally important theory is situation, situated cognition or situated learning, primarily by John Seeley Brown, although his main paper was written with also with Collins and de Goud. Learning is embedded in the activity, context and culture in which it was learned. And learning, while interacting with others, is done through shared activities and language. So the important concept here is that learning is about performance in situations, rather than just an accumulation of knowledge. Here's a quote from Celie Brown on knowledge. Instead of pouring knowledge into people's heads, you need to help them grind anew a set of eyeglasses so they can see the world in a new way. Very important thinker in terms of, for example, digital technologies is Seymour Papert with his concept of constructionism, which is related to constructivism, but is very much about the creation of artifacts. Papert worked with Piaget and followed many of his ideas. And constructionism is based on learning by doing utilising physical materials, also virtual materials, for example, electronic media, to creatively develop abstract learning. And Papert's been involved with many, many revolutionary ideas in technology, including Logo Turtles, the One Laptop Per Child programme, Lego Mindstorms, and Alan Kay's Dynabook. So he's a major contributor to learning technology and its concepts. Here's a nice quote from Papert on digital teaching and learning. Nothing could be more absurd than an experiment in which computers are placed in a classroom where nothing else has changed. Community of practice is a very important concept when we're looking at collaborative learning. 
And this really comes from both Jean Lave and Etienne Wenger. A community of practice has three components, the domain, the community, and the practice. And the learning is seen as unintentional or informal, situated within an authentic activity, context, and culture. And it's all about the social relationships and the co-participation. So it's very much a theory of collaborative learning. Here's a quote from Wenger on communities of practice. Communities of practice formed by people who engage in a process of collective learning in a shared domain of human endeavor, who share a concern or a passion for something they do and learn how to do it better as they interact regularly. A more recent theory, and perhaps a slightly controversial one, is connectivism which was developed by George Siemens, and he describes it as a learning theory for the digital age. And it takes into account the idea that internet technologies have created new opportunities for people to learn and share information, and that learning can take place across online peer networks. And as if to demonstrate that concept, Siemens launched the first MOOC in 2008, which of course is massive online open course. Here's a quote from Siemens on technology and learning, quite a challenging one perhaps. We always seem to think about how does technology influence learning. Sometimes these roles actually have to be reversed. We have to think about how learning influences technology because there are greater changes occurring in our society and not just within technology. So here's a few references, uh, quite a few of these um, summaries of learning theories came out of Olson and Hergenhan. Uh, Papert and Harrell's Constructionism is well worth a read. There's a great website called Simply Psychology that has lots and lots of introductory uh, psychology articles for students. And the Encyclopedia of Inf Informal Education provided the information about communities of practice. So I hope you found that very quick tour through some important learning theories related to digital and collaborative learning interesting and I hope it inspires you to look a little bit deeper into some of those various theories.